It's actually this bearing. This bearing is locked up to where oh, <laughs> it wants to spin one way. It'll spin this way, but if you try to spin it that way, <laughs> it's a one-way bearing. So there's going to be, it's going to take a quarter inch nut driver or quarter inch whatever you want to have. And this is just a little bit of a locking screw. Sometimes these things are just, they're so water damaged you have to break them off or sometimes at the back, but this one here doesn't look too bad. So hopefully it's going to just, if I can get a nut driver, it's going to pop right off. There we go. Yeah, loosened up real easy. Uh, a couple of three turns. You don't have to unscrew it all the way. This is just turning a little device in the back here. That this is what locks in the bearing, keeps it out. So now we have this sitting. You could take some. I'll just slam these things right on the workbench. And as you can see, I'm starting to get the bearing out of here. And a few taps and we're out so now we have the bearing this is our culprit right here she's just not spinning we're gonna pull this one off with a set of pullers the back one actually feels pretty nice it's up to you whether to replace or not the bell in here we just want to make sure we clean this out there's your pullers right there okay Okay, get her nice and straight. Pull her off straight. That uh, bearing, eh, see it or not. It's a 203 bearing. It's one of the standard, standard motor bearings we use. There's a new one. So let's go ahead. Take it off. To put it on, just make sure everything here is clean, ain't all rusted up. I like to put just a little bit of teeny bit of grease lube on it. Went three quarter inch galvanized, half inch galvanized. Just go down, just hold it to where it centers. Don't let it get off to the side and you know, go like this or go like this and screw this thing. Just keep it hold in the center. Don't want to mess your balls up in your ball bearings. Hear a change in sound when it's done? And you know, you look at it, she's all done. So, go ahead. A little bit of grease. Put that back on there. Put a little bit there too. And let's put that back on. This is open up. This is going in. Right there. Same thing. If you want to take, I like using something a little bit bigger to get around. There's a seal in there, like a one-inch PVC coupling. Pound the M bell back on. You want to get it down to where it's all flat. Okay. Now we can take. This is how this piece catches everything here. Yeah. Okay, now she's getting tight. Okay, let's go ahead. We got our case assembly, everything over here ready to go. Our rear end bell, there's a little, there's actually two pieces on the Accenture. There's a spacer, which goes in here. It's just a little flat washer piece. 
it goes in this bell you want to make sure also there's no ridges back up along here if it's been spinning and going like this wah 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 chances are you need to replace this end bell because the bearing spinning inside and this is just like a little you know it's a it's a retaining washer that it allows expansion it just it's a spacer washer and it goes in here too on top of the other so with that ready to go let's go ahead and get the rotor assembly ready to go back in with the front end bell so we're going to go ahead and stab this in if we made our marks and lines we can actually just line these up front one tap it in Now for the rear, it'll go back on. What I like to do with these through bolts, these things see a little bit of abuse. I like to take a little bit of, just a little bit of grease. I keep it on a, I keep a, a little brush with some. And I want to brush up these. Just to put a little bit of grease on, just to hold them, they see some water something else it just makes them go they don't bind up they just go so nice and easy okay so we got a rear end bell we put her on spacers in there make sure be careful there's no wires nothing hanging out and then Go ahead and slowly just tap her on. Once you get close enough where it's going to start to go, just take and you can line up your marks again. Now she started a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts through. And if they're going through the right place, they will start to thread. If they're not, then they won't. It's just through bolts going through from one end bell to the other. And if you don't have these lined up correctly, they're not going to get through the center holes. And they're not going to make it. And if you do, they will. So I've got a little bit of um, space here in between the bell. I just want to, want to make sure I tighten up these four bolts that I go fairly even so I don't you know torque anything one way or the other too much. So I've got my little trusty drill. We'll go that one. Here we're about on. Looking pretty good. And then what I like to do is make sure everything's all free and the bearing's not bound up. Spin the motor. I spin it with my hand. Feels good. I like giving a few little taps. And then on top, I like taking a 5 16 just by hand while I'm spinning the motor just to make sure and feel that everything's spinning so good. Now this is a motor that it was humming before. And I'm taking because it wasn't spinning, it was humming because it was bound up. So let's go ahead and wire this thing up and see if that's the case. Why were you humming? Were you humming because you're a bad pump or because you had a bad bearing? Hey! You was humming because you had a bad bearing. That's all. That's all I don't want to do it. It's just one bad bearing. There was a problem. This whole thing. So a five dollar bearing made your motor not work. Seal plate. We already said how to check that. No cracks. Looks good. Let's get the seal out of this one. You can take, yeah, whatever. Screwdriver, punch. You just gotta like wedge it to where you get behind that 
seal in there and you're just you're popping behind the back of it whoops I broke it we'll go again it's no it can't really hurt nothing so there's your seal she's out we want to check and just make sure inspect the seal plate the seal surface and no cracks nothing melted burn up otherwise clean that up this one here is pretty simple I'm just gonna take a little bit of not a bit of take a little sock rag wipe it out PS 1000 seal of choice um, I don't know about a Pantera OEM PS 1000 that's what goes in a whisper flow US seals I've been using them 30 plus years great seal great seal I would never change this is what seals the water out this is the part that goes in the seal plate this is the part that goes on the impeller these two rub like this two pieces of ceramic that's what seals the water out when that motor spins one's on the impeller one's on the seal plate so we want to take the one part put it on the seal plate to seal up around this to this nothing really fully required but I happen to love a product called plasto joint stick now that one's all jacked up plaster joint stick you guys ought to just go ahead and just give me plaster joint stick to advertise your product it's so good plasto plasto joint stick plasto joint stick um, I've been using this a lot of years it's good stuff I like to put you can use silicone um, GE silicone 100% silicone just a little bit tiny bit of caulking to seal this up around here in the field we can't wait for that to dry and we'll just take and put a little bit of this plaster joint stick um, it's just a little bit of a membrane in there if something happens to want a seat between or see, come out and not seal up between this and the seal plate here so we put this in our uh, seal driver of choice is a one inch schedule 40 PVC coupling one inch anything you have that will drive around the seal is going to work fine I like to put my hammer on the side I don't use the head it just hits the PVC a little bit more even just drive it down you'll hear it everything's good and solid everything is in here seated up nice everything on the back side she's seated up all the way okay 